Uh, today, Psalm 23, Psalm 23, we will be checking out of the hotel, Psalm 23. Uh, it has the 6B part, but I just want to walk through again, start at verse 1 and get to verse 6. Amen. Psalm 23, if you have the King James Version. You'll find these holy, divine, and inspired words beginning at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And for today's text, if you will, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God. For just a few minutes on this morning, as we close out this sermon series that we've been in for some time now, resting in the presence and power of Psalm 23, I want to tag the text, if you will, for a subject for a thought. His palaces at life's end. His palaces at life's end. When we started this series, we talked about the impact of Psalm 23. We talked about the fact that Psalm 23, Delbert, is a wayside well for everyone who's thirsty to come and receive a refreshing drink. We talked about the fact that Psalm 23 is the best handkerchief that I know for both weary and weeping eyes. We talked about the fact, Andrew, that Psalm 23 hath soothed more souls than calamine lotion hath soothed bodies. We, we talked about this, Andy. We, we said, other than John 3.16, obviously, this is the most famous and the most recognizable passage of Scripture in all of the Bible. Amen. They said, once again, that Psalm 23 is deep enough for the seasoned scholar to swim in and never touch the bottom. But it's shallow enough for a child to play in and never drown. That's why Brother Taylor Jones, the old theologian, was right. He said, blessed is the day when Psalm 23 was born. As we look at Psalm 23, it's, it's, it's genius in its simplicity. In these six verses, in these 119 uh, uh, words, in six verses, what David does is, Brother Deacon Bonner, he gives us six benefits, uh, 12 benefits rather, or 12 advantages that he enjoys because the Lord is his shepherd. First of all, he said, beside me, is my shepherd he said beneath me are green pastures he said near me are still waters he said ahead of me is righteous paths he said within me 
is restored spirits. He said, against me is my enemies. He said, for me is his rod and his staff. He said, around me there's a table land. He said, upon me there's anointing oil. He said, above me there are overflowing blessings. He said, behind me there's goodness and mercy. He said, before me is my father's house. It's, it's simple and I think right there is a good time for us to stop and take a praise identification break because God just alone in those 12 things father you deserve a hallelujah you deserve a glory to God in the highest you deserve Lord we worship you Lord we lift your name on high Lord we adore you Lord we praise you Lord we magnify you God ain't nobody like you thank you God for the 12 benefits and advantages that we share simply because you are our shepherd not only Reverend Jackson does does these six verses and these 119 words list for us 12 benefits and advantages but also David makes seven statements here Brother Kermit and we're able to tie one of the Old Testament names of God to the verse based on how bad this shepherd is so when David gives us these seven statements he's also bragging about the ability of his shepherd he's letting the readers know ain't nobody bad like my God ain't nobody can touch my God ain't nobody on the same level can't nobody heal like my God can't nobody deliver like my God can't nobody do it like my God can't nobody rock you like my God can't nobody touch you like my God can't nobody bless you like my God can't nobody lead you like my God can't nobody guide you like my God he says that and he said it in seven statements you saying Reverend where is it at it's right there in the text he says the Lord sister Johnny he said it's my shepherd and what he was saying was Jehovah Rohi, which means the Lord, my shepherd. See, you got to get personal with this. It's good that you know that the God is the God of somebody else, but it ain't like you can say my. Yeah, Joshua was my son. Jade is my daughter. Nicole is my wife. You may have a wife, a son, and a daughter, but it ain't them. Them is my. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, Jehovah Rohi, and that means the Lord my shepherd. And then David said, I shall not want, and that's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. That's why I don't want nothing, because I got a provider. Then he says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. Now he's talking about Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. Then David says, he restores my soul. Now he's talking about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. Not the Lord, the healer. He's the Lord, my healer. Then he says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. That's Jehovah Tiskanu. That's the Lord, my righteousness. Then he says, I will fear no evil for, for thou art with me. And that's Jehovah Shammah. The Lord, my Lord, is ever present. Yes, then he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And that's Jehovah Nisi. That means the Lord, my victory or the Lord, my banner. So, so, so as we finish psalm 23 as we check out of psalm 23 hotel resting in the peace and power psalm 23 notice now we're coming full circle nicole marshall at the end of the season because if you was with us here in week one about 100 weeks ago we started in the springtime pastors of hebron and bethlehem and as spring merged with summer, we headed north, hiking up from pasture to pasture, going onward and upward. Our trails, Craig, have, have sometimes wound through difficult canyons and wild gorges. We enjoyed the highlands of Galilee, 
with their sloping pastures and their overflowing troughs. And now the season is nearly over and winter is at hand, just like for us. And now we headed home. The first three verses would be fulfilled in the home of the rain, home range of the shepherd. The place where they would spend their winters. But, but, Sandy, verse 5 and 4 and 5, I'm sorry, they take a turn. They talk about going through the valleys. This indicates the travel up through the valleys to the highland range. The tables that the shepherd has prepared in advance for the sheep. Remember, the shepherd goes before to the table land and he goes there to put some things there that the sheep is going to need when they get there. And there's other things there. He takes it away because it's not good for the sheep. That's God providing provision, pro video. He goes before and he removes what ain't good for me. And then he puts there what I'm going to need when I get to the table. Yes. As they come back. <coughs> As they come back. As they make their way back home. There's a statement of confidence. The statement is in verse 6. The statement is, I'm on my way back home and now I got a testimony. And the testimony is, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Yes. That, that, that's the statement. That, there it is right there. All the days of my life. You see, Sister Rando, as they come back home, they come in through those same valleys that held the danger and the threats before. And now they're coming through the same place. The danger of the unknown. And this time, the attitude, the attitude of the sheep is different. Because they have been through these valleys before. See, they know, Minister Perry, that they're going to make it through. Because now they know by experience. Why? Because the shepherd has already led them through the ways. It's, it's good hearing about God delivering somebody. But baby, it ain't nothing like him delivering you. It's good for you to tell me that God is good. But it's better for me to experience his goodness. It's good for you to tell me God is a healer. But it's better, baby, when he heal my body. It's good for you to tell me God is a way maker. But it's better when he make a way for me. So since he's the same yesterday, today, and forever... If he did it then, mm -hmm. baby, he can do it today. What, what are you saying, Reverend? Listen, if God, <coughs> might as well just do three of them, huh? <laughs> Praise God. Just think on what I said already. <laughs> All right, take the top off of that one just in case. Well, I'm playing like I play for Battle Creek Central. I'm sorry, I meant to. <laughs> I just had to get y'all back. I'm kidding. Eric and, and uh, yeah, Jermaine, they know how to play. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shabbat. So watch. <coughs> Since God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I said earlier, before I got a cough attack, if he did it then, he can do it now. He said, Grim, what, what are you saying? Well, see, you, you keep telling me that you're up against a Red Sea. And what I'm trying to tell you, if God opened it up for Moses, God can open it up for you. If you in a furnace, don't worry. God is the same God. He can cool the furnace. He can position you for the furnace. If God saved Daniel from the lions, he can stop those trying to nip at your behind. God can, do, he's the same God yesterday. Today. And forever. In other words, if he brought me here, he can take me back. When we travel, Sister Pam Delt, we have the GPS, obviously navigation, global positioning system in the vehicle. But even with that one, my wife still brings the Tom Tom. So now we got. You know, we can get guided there by Siri and Sarah. <laughs> and what happens is when it gets us to the spot, it gets us to, to Great Wood Lodge, it gets us there. And then we'll stay about two or three days. And I can't stay too much longer than that anywhere. 
only place I want to be more than three days is heaven and that's the truth I could go to Rome and I, three days that's it I can go to Hawaii three days that's, that's long enough and we praying because she want to go for a week so we praying and as the folks say at the church meeting y'all pray for me and I pray for y'all so, so when we get there, we, since we made it to our destination, we, we tie up the device and stick it in the glove compartment because we don't need it because we've made it. We no longer need directions because now we are at the destination. But after two or three days, we get ready to go. We get back in the car. You don't have to do all that again. All you have to do is hit one thing. Home. And you know that since we came here, this has already led us through all the detour. This has already led us around the roadblocks. So with God, once you get there and you got to go back, all you got to do is tap the Holy Spirit in. And the same Holy Spirit that got you there, if you pay attention, he'll take you back. And he'll even let you know about ditches that they put there when you wasn't there. Thank God that we got somebody that knows how to take us home because he's the one that brought us here. That's why like David, we can boast that goodness and mercy shall nip at my heels. And they shall follow me. And then David said, And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, we usually read this verse 6, especially the B part. We usually read this, Valerie as a promise of eternity but Lorraine is more than that no no see the first statement refers to the confidence of the sheep what's the confidence he said I know goodness and mercy shall follow me I don't guess I ain't thinking I ain't hoping I ain't imagining I know surely it's a matter of fact statement Goodness and mercy yes. shall follow me. Yes. But this statement, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, refers to the contentment of the sheep. The first half of Sheena talks about the confidence. This talks about the contentment. <coughs> Remember the journey. They've been to the highlands up to the mountain pastures and now at the end of the journey the sheep Jim wants to be in the house of the shepherd Ruth, Ruth Smith is right, I'm right there in the text the sheep is saying that he is with the Lord because he wants to be with the Lord not just during eternity but for all the days of his life See, Deacon Andrew Williams Jr., the word house has a broader meaning than what we think. It refers to the fields and there is the pastures that the shepherd prepares for the sheep. They are the house of the Lord. Joe Wingfield, this is a promise for all of this life. That the sheep statement is that he's content to be in the house, in the presence of the Lord, wherever that may be. Now, I know that the Bible has one interpretation. But it has many applications. And I want to apply this to us. I want Sister Nita Richardson to use the house analogy. And I want to tie that into the church. Unfortunately, 
Some of us, a lot of us, will easily proclaim, I will dwell. But in reality, Sister Joyce Young, many of us simply view the church as a physical place and not a spiritual place. In other words, when we leave the sanctuary, for some, you have left church. And that's why your behavior is different in the sanctuary and out there because in your mind, you have left the church. That's why your behavior, your, your attitude, your actions, that's why your principles, your precepts, <coughs> that's why all of that, open that for me, Reverend, is different because in your mind, you didn't left the church and you leave it just like a wrinkled up church bulletin that you begged to get and didn't read when you got it. <laughs> That's why we can say hallelujah on Sunday and the hell with you on Monday. Because <laughs> I ain't in church no more. That's why I can bless the Lord on Monday and bless you out on Tuesday. <laughs> be looking around them and huh, huh, Pastor Ashley here now let me tell you listen I ain't got a heaven or hell for you I don't care how many cuss words you put together I done heard some of the best cussing in by sanctified church folk I mean they can split adverbs and adjectives when they cuss I mean present participle cussing they can cuss you out in three person singular That's, that's why the idea of church for some, says Jeanette Williams, has been reduced to a place, watch this Neani, where people are hatched, matched, and dispatched. You say, Rem, what, what are you talking about? Well, well, see, hatch means that babies are blessed and dedicated. And we didn't have some folk quit because I wouldn't dedicate the, well, let me let me get a drink first. Yeah, I need some water to say this. See, I don't I don't mind blessing the baby. And that simply means that we're dedicating the child back to the Lord. We ain't baptizing them and this don't mean he gonna be a preacher or she gonna be a prophetess. It's just simply dedicating. The Bible said everything that opened the matrix, everything that comes through the womb needs to be dedicated and given back to God. And that's what we do with our children. What we're saying is, God, I don't have enough sense to raise this big head baby because I ain't got no sense. So I'm going to show enough need some divine guidance. So guide me so I can guide the child so that the child will be better off than I was because I know I was a plum fool. So dedications were simply dedicating the baby back to God. And one thing I do not do, and you can ask till your lips fall off. If you ain't married to that woman, I'll take the woman. She can come up. I'll take the baby. Your daddy self going to have to sit down. You ain't coming up. I ain't sanctioning sin. The baby didn't do nothing wrong. I'll dedicate the baby back, but you can't. Well, why can't they stand up there? Are they married? No. Well, what you want me to do? I ain't sanctioning sin. Oh no! If he and then he that matter concern, why don't he do like Beyonce and put a ring on it? And then you can stand up there. See, it ain't about playing family. You really want because there's some stuff in this dedication that I'm gonna ask you, and I know you don't do. You don't even come to church. So I ain't finna get up here and make a, rock, a mockery of the dedication just because you asked my child what what did act like it. What size shoe he wear? What have you bought him since he's been in the world? Oh, 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 that's what I thought. <laughs> but you the daddy now. Yeah, it don't take much to be a daddy. I mean, we can, you know, I ain't, you know. <laughs> this idea of church as a physical place is also evidenced by people who come to church. But, but Petra, when you look at their actions, their attitudes, and their attributes, you quickly witness the fact that while they may have been in the building, they must not have been a part of the body. Cussing better than a sailor. With your sanctified sedition, at least fold the shirt inside out. Kingdom of God, blessed to his name, ministry. Well, all that cussing? 
don't even know what kind of make a car you got because it's full of bumper stickers and fish and you don't even know what that fish symbol th you think it means fish <laughs> and slayed in the spirit hallelujah <laughs> anybody can quote something but it takes somebody serious to live what you quote you see there's a word here Sharon that makes, it was right there in the text, that makes all the difference in the world. It sets the pretenders apart from the contenders. This is right there in the text. It separates those who profess from those who possess. Because everybody shouting ain't saved. It's a reason folks shout in the church. Uh-huh. There's a reason. See, some people shout Reverend Owens because they were at 10 and they got a 10 on one foot and an eight and a half on the other one. That's why they shout. Because they feed her. And then some men shout because it's tithes and offering times and, and Sister Cantaloupe is walking around giving tithes and offering and that dress kind of clinging and he ain't never said amen. They ain't amen. Holla, look, can't even say holla praise. Can't even get the word out straight. <laughs> there's some professors and then there's those who possess. There's some pretenders and then there's some contenders. The, the, the little word that you need to pay attention to is right there in the text. Titus. The little word is will. It, it's right there. It's in your Bible too. They ain't check it out. It says, and I will. Will, will. That's a little word, but it's, it's big. Will. See, will is a kind of customary or habitual action. Will. It's, it's kind of a likelihood or certainty. You know, you remember when your mom and daddy used to say, I will whip your blank <laughs> as soon as I can pull over. Because they're going to get it. They, what they're telling you is it's certain. So you can start sniffing now. Because <laughs> soon as opportunity permits me, I will put my foot dead up. Y'all know them. <laughs> and I got a mother and a sister would testify. They don't, they don't like being with me in the public. Cause I grab kids where they mess up. I don't wait till you get. I'm not shall. I, I, I'm not. Mine is not. I will. Mine is. I'm about to. Now. Now. You remember, Mama, when I had Josh on the cereal aisle in Walmart, and you and Bob ran down the other aisle. Somebody, I ain't going to jail. <laughs> I refuse anything I got gave birth to to defy me. Anything. If I feed you and clothe you, if you're a dog, cat, or a monkey, you're going to do exactly what I tell you. Or else you ain't going to be in my house. Can I get it? Is that wrong? Oh, no. You're going to listen to me. There are three. And me and the court, and we were in this place the other day, and the little girl standing up on a chair about to bust her head, about one or two, and the mama, come here, Becky. <laughs> Becky got down out the chair and went the other way. No, we wouldn't have asked for Becky. We'd have grabbed Becky by the back. And when you grab them, you're supposed to use all five fingers like this. Make sure that, and then you t tighten it. Will, no, will, 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 will. That's certainty. That's, that's like this going to happen. See, will is a capacity or ability or an intention or a probability. He said, I will. But I've been thinking about this. After all God has done for us. After God has led me in the path of righteousness. After God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. After God has restored my soul. After taking me from the lowlands to the highlands. God has snatched me out of darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. And he has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. 
God has taken me from not enough to not too much. God has taken me from cotton sacks to Cadillacs. God has taken me from wagon wheels to Oldsmobiles. God has taken me from ash cake to shaking me. God has taken me from ABC to CBS to HBO. Since God has done all of that, we need to move from the probability and we need to move to the determination and certainty and inevitability with the force of a command and say, I shall, I will. What do you say, Reverend? Some folk in church, listen. Come what may from day to day, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Strong winds may blow. That's not going to bother me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The thunder may roll. Don't make no difference. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Lightning may flash. Makes no difference. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I may have to deal with some disappointments. I may have a temporary setback. Don't worry. I ain't running I will dwell I may have to go through the valley of the shadow of death but I can go through because I ain't going to stay because he said I go through the valley of the shadow of death I know that if I got a valley then I got to open on both ends so it may be dark in the middle baby but I shall dwell enemies may come to eat up my flesh and they may take a few bites but I will dwell my bills may be high and my provision may be low but I am going to dwell in the house of God I may get laughed at but don't worry laugh now I'm still going to dwell in the house of the Lord I may be mistreated in the house but don't worry I'm not going to jump off the ship I'm still going to dwell in the house of the Lord I may be misunderstood I don't care I shall dwell in the house of the Lord I may may be tripped on I may be tripped up I may be tripped out don't worry I will dwell in the house of the Lord I may be lied on I may be lied to I may be separated I may be single I may be busted disgusted broke ugly snagger tooth it don't matter I will dwell I may be divorced, I might be duped, I might be dropped, don't worry, I will dwell. I might have a problem with somebody in the alto section, don't worry, I shall dwell. I might have a problem with the ushers, don't worry, I shall dwell. I might have a problem with one of the deacons, the mothers, the fathers, the sons, the boyfriend, the uncle's cousin's nephew, don't worry, I shall We'll say I shall dwell the minute somebody don't give you a bulletin. <laughs> I'm leaving church wide. We wasn't folded right. The creases don't match. <laughs> and, and you're going to dwell. <laughs> you should just claim the truth and say, I shall dwell at fire keepers. I shall dwell in the number house. Because that's where you dwell. I shall dwell at check and go. I should dwell at cash and rob. Because that's what they're doing. Casting you out and robbing you at the same time. <laughs> Let me close by giving you three reasons that I will dwell in the house, the church of the Lord forever. Shall not to be long. First of all, I shall dwell in the house because the Lord's house is a place of revelation. See, revelation means those things, Delbert, which were previously hidden are now uncovered and they have been revealed. That's what revelation means. We still got grown folks scared to read it because, you know, there's a dragon in, in revelation that where there's one you sleeping with, you ain't left him. Listen. In the house of God, his will is revealed to you. And it is in the house of God that you will get a better understanding of the things, watch this, that's going on in the world. And you're going, no, that, yes, it is true. Watch. Psalm 70, I'm going to read this 1 through 17. Y'all ain't got nowhere to go. Psalm 73, 1 through 17. 
It ain't going to be long. It's the word of God. Yeah. Watch this. You need to see it. Because I want to walk you up to it. I need to show you, baby. Because, see, I love I tell you this stuff because I love you. I don't care if you're mad at me. Good. You're supposed to get mad at me. If you were never mad at me, I wouldn't be doing my job. So go ahead and get mad. I still love you. And I'm going to hug you and ain't going to pay no attention to your madness. <laughs> Psalm 73. Watch this now. I said the Lord's house is a place of revelation. Watch Psalm 73. I'm going to read 1 through 17. I ain't going to be long. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. That's you and me. But as for me, watch this. He said, my feet were almost gone, spoon. My steps had well nigh slipped. He said, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. What is he saying, Penny? He said, God, wait a minute. Here I am working at Burger King. I'm struggling. I'm paying my tithes, going to church. And then my partner, he take five minutes on the corner of Good Al and Goo Goo and he make $5,000. Right. Yeah. He don't work for Walgreens, but he's selling prescriptions. <laughs> he said, I was envious of the foolish. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. He said, they ain't even as in trouble as other men. Neither are they playing like other men. Here we are doing right and folk laughing at us. Sinners riding on twenties and I'm walking on my two feet. Therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. And they got more than their heart could wish. And we keep talking about what the Lord would do. And I'm broke. Broken in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> they are corrupt. Genasia. Jaleesa, they, they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Look, they, they shut their mouth against the heavens and their tongues walk through the earth. Therefore his people return thither and waters are full of a cup wrung out to them. And not, watch this. They even say, how does God know? <laughs> and is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches and we struggling. All I got is helper. I don't have a hamburger. I'm a hamburger helper. You need to help me with the helper. Because my help ain't good. And they increasing. Verily, he said, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. He said, they don't need me coming to church. I just offer nothing. Just pie in the sky stuff. About some God sitting way up somewhere. He going to bless you. Well, he ain't blessed me yet. Johnny selling weed. Johnny got on Jordans. He got on a triple fat goose. I can see him blessed. He got on a gold Mickey Mouse bracelet. <laughs> Earrings in his tongue, navel, kidneys, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to help the young folk in the text. Because they seeing what we see. He said, for all the day long have I been plagued. And I've been chasing every morning. And I'm getting up to him about what the Lord will do. But well, the Lord need to hurry up. Because if you hurry up, I'm about to be a street pharmacist too. I ain't going to Rite Aid and Walgreen. I'm going to Manchester and Jordan. And I'm going to sell some rocks. And I ain't talking about geology. I'm talking about smokeology. Snoopology, Josh. No, I'm, I'm trying to help the kids in the text. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of the children. Watch what he said in verse 16. Y'all know this is true. He said, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. I got mad at God. I got mad at myself. Going to Sunday school for nothing. Going to church for nothing. Giving my tithes for nothing. I'm broke. I'm disgusted. I'm getting put out. There's a U-Haul backed up to my hand. And y'all are talking about what the Lord would do. I'm just telling y'all the truth. But, but watch what happened. He said in verse 16, when I thought to know it, he said it was too painful for me. But thank God for verse 17. He said, until I went into the sanctuary, then I understood the end. It, it was when I went into the sanctuary, I got a view. Because when I went into the sanctuary, there was a casket up there. And that player, player, who from the Himalaya is now dead, dead, going to be sad, sad. I understand that's not the life. It's temporary. 
Yes, he was riding on twenties, but now he's rolling on twos. He had a Cadillac, now he got a casket. Yeah. He lived in the high rise with all that drug money, but now he in the dirt. With all that money. Your daddy and mama got a GoFundMe page because they ain't got enough money to bury him. He smoked more in the week than the casket costs. GoFundMe page. Can you help me bury him? Yeah, give me a shovel. Yeah. We can take him by the barbecue grill right out there. He ain't got to be six feet under. A foot of good, good enough. We lay him this way. We don't need a casket. Just roll him out and cover him up with some aluminum foil. He'd be all right. <laughs> no. I don't know where that came from. The point I'm making. When he went into the sanctuary, it all made sense. Revelation came. See, I thought, oh, I thought that was the life. And now I see that's actually the death. I thought that running woman and sleeping with everybody was you were supposed to do. Until I went into the bathroom and it started... See, I thought that's what a man was. I thought a man, I thought that's what you did to woman. Because that's all I've seen was pimps and thugs and, and hucksters. And now I'm heartbroken because the one I did like treated me like the other 50 that I didn't like. And how I treated them. So the Lord's house is a place of revelation. Secondly, the Lord's house is a place of regulation. See, you need a place to learn the rules God has for your life. And if you want to live in a life with no rules, you might well just jump off 94 at 5 o'clock. Because everywhere you go, going to have rules. And they should have them. No shoes, no shirt, no circus. Penny running on the football field. They got rules, okay? They got lines. You go over there, you're out of bounds. God got the same thing. God said, as long as you play in the field, you can enjoy the pleasures of it. But as soon as you step out of bounds, a flag... Why? Because you're outside the field of play. So you can't live without checks and balances. We need boundaries, kids. Why you think your parents tell you to be in at 9, 10 o'clock? That's a boundary. You should be in. Ain't nothing. No, no, ain't never mind. Mama, things don't get popping till 10. Exactly. Popping. When we came up, popping was popcorn. Now popping is shooting people. You know how much joy that we gave our mother when she was in the bed at 10, 11 o'clock and heard a police siren? She could roll over because she knew it wasn't her kids. She ain't had to, oh Lord, what is Tink, where Tink at? I wasn't in no streets. She could sleep and knew that police wasn't coming because of her son. You need boundaries. You need boundaries. Well, you know, down the street, they don't have to come in. Son, they mama or daddy ain't there. No, they ain't got to come in. Now, you can switch. If you want to go live with them, you can. But you're going to follow rules in here. You 15, talking about that. You need to be asleep at 10. What else you doing? You need boundaries, kids. You need boundaries. Listen to your parents. You need boundaries. They can tell you who you can and you can't date. They're your child. They know if she fast and they know if he ain't. No. They listen to them. I like him. Well, you need to like somebody else. <laughs> you need to like somebody who go to church. You need to like somebody to save. Now, that don't mean it ain't some crooks in the church, but we can, at least they in here, we can work on them. <laughs> no, you need to date who we tell you to date. Yes, there's arranged marriages. I'm arranging for you to marry a Christian young man. I'm arranging for you to marry a Christian young woman. I ain't raised you to marry cinnamon. <laughs> You need boundaries, y'all. I'm serious. See, the Word of God brings order to confusion and brings clarity to the muddiness of the world. That's why the psalmist says, Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you, the God of self, my salvation on you, do I wait all the day. That's why the psalmist could say, Your word, O God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Not only, unless I hold you too long. I know the lions play at one. Y'all are going to be listening to me by then. 
The Lord's house is a place of revelation, number one. The Lord's house is a place of regulation, number two. And lastly, thank God, the Lord's house is a place of restoration. Yes. See, Ken, Ken, in this house, you can restore your soul. In this house. I ain't talking about just this one. I mean any of the houses, you know, any of the church, anybody, church, you know what I'm saying. In this house, God can restore broken bodies. In this house, God can restore broken bones. In this house, God can restore broken spirits. In this house, God can restore broken relationships. In this house, God can restore broken fellowships. In this house, God can restore broken dreams. In this house, God can restore splintered lives. In this house, God can restore fractured emotions. I thank God that there's some stuff in this house. There's some peace in this house. There's some power in this house. There's some promise in this house there's some prayer in this house there's some pardon in this house there's some forgiveness in this house there's some love in this house there's some joy in this house there's some forgiveness in this house there's some grace in this house there's some salvation in this house this house is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand Thank you for going to Calvary, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for being my shepherd. Thank you for taking nails in your hand. Thank you for taking nails in your feet. Thank you for taking the spear in the side. Thank you for taking the crowns on your head. Thank you for dying. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for standing on resurrected ground, declaring all power of heaven and earth in my hand. The Lord, baby, honey child, is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not lack, and I shall not have to be. Because whatever I need, the shepherd has already gone ahead to the table, and he's prepared it for me. The door of God's church is open.